I, I've got to be careful with this story. Now, the reason I have to be careful with this story is because my uh, my, my nan is still alive, yes. right? Lovely lady, queen of the family and all that jazz, right? So this is said with nothing but respect. And it's important I state that she claims this didn't happen. Yes, she does. She's adamant, isn't she's she? She's adamant this didn't happen. And my mum, oh. whenever I say whenever I say this story aloud, she goes, don't be ridiculous, Daniel. Never repeat that story. Yeah. However, scout, scout's, honest tr- <laughs> scout's honest truth. This is a true story. I witnessed it with my own eyes. And I, I understand why my nan doesn't want to admit it. Right? It's a little bit sexy. It's a little bit... Right. Yeah, but she was, what, 20 years younger at the time? So uh, was, Yeah, it must have been. Yeah, almost yeah, exactly, actually, exactly. thinking about it. Yeah, I was, I was 15 at the time. So let me paint the picture for you, right? Me and my granddad, we had a fantastic relationship when I was a teenager, right? Uh, he was banging into computers, and I was into computers from 12. I was building computers by the time I was, you know, 12. I was writing uh, HTML and web design by the time I was 13, 14. Wow. You know, I really, I loved my computers. I was banging into it. It was my first qualification, I loved it. And um, my granddad would constantly get viruses on his computer, right? Weekly. Is that from porn? We- <laughs> Weekly, right? To the point where before this story, when I went up there, the virus was nude photos of Anna Kornikova. <laughs> He's so your granddad. <laughs> now, my, my nan back in the past, she was a little hot number. She was a little blondie. She got mistaken for Marilyn Monroe, that oh, kind of look. Wow. She's beautiful. Still is, but obviously she's 80 odd now. Different type of beauty. <laughs> Love you, Nan. And um, stop digging. And yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you want a hand with that shovel? I, I need a breath. <laughs> He's so nervous about telling this story now. It's my favourite story to tell, right? It's my favourite story because I find it the funniest thing in the world. Yeah. Other people, well, you, you let me know. So this particular day, my granddad calls me up. I think it was a Saturday or a Friday. It must have been a Saturday because my dad was home. And uh, he go, he calls me up and he goes, Daniel son. That's what Daniel son. Uh, he goes, Daniel son, um, I've got another virus. You need to come and help me. And rather than try and fix the virus, the quickest thing to do was just to wipe it, reinstall Windows. Oh, okay. Job, jobs are good. One. And that was back in the day where you could have a dodgy copy of Windows. Uh, You'd have a dodgy okay. pass key. So we just put the same Windows over and over and over. So um, this became such a routine thing and it would only take three or four hours to fix. So I'd go down there, you know, set it off to do its things. It, does it by itself. Yep. We'd have lunch, you know, we'd go for a walk or whatnot. So um, he calls me up and he goes, Daniel, son, I need to come down. I've got a virus. I was like, <laughs> again. <laughs> um, Get off, Anna. <laughs> yeah. Let me go and ask Dad when you give me a lift. So I went up to the to the yard. I said, Dad, Granddad wants me. Can you help me give me give me a lift down there? Because I was too young to drive. And he goes, yeah, yeah, no worries. I've just got to finish this. Mm-hmm. I'll drop you down at about 10. I like, bring it. Granddad, I'll be there about 10. He goes, great. I'll see you then. And sometimes he would come and pick me up, sometimes. But if my dad dropped me down, he would drop me back and vice versa. Yeah. So uh gets to about ten past nine, right? And my, gra- and my dad comes down. He goes, oh, I'm going to take you down to your granddad's now. Uh, I'll finish this when I get back. I was like, oh, fantastic. Even Brilliant. Better. Brilliant. Even better. I can go early. Brilliant. Now, my nan and granddad lived in this bungalow, uh, but it was a horseshoe-shaped bungalow. Okay. So it had two, an entrance in either end, and then you would have this kind of living room in the middle, and then you'd have the kitchen on one side, and the bedrooms on the other side. A lovely bungalow, private and everything. It was lovely. They did well for themselves, and uh, and they had it all triple glazed nice. as well. It was all brand new fitted f- f- fittings and fixtures and all that type of thing. So you'd open the door and it was just silent. It was and you close the door and it was silent. It was brilliant. So I rock up at about half nine. Right, it's twenty minutes away. I walk up about half nine, and I go into the front door just like I normally as would. You normally would, yeah. I turn to the right, go into the office. Granddad's not there. <gasps> So I'm like, oh, okay, computer's turned on. So I, I quickly set the windows to uh, reformat. And uh, I then popped in the living room. It was the only place he could be. Because they were up at like five every day. Oh, God. And uh, I, walk like in, <laughs> yeah, I walk into the living room. And as I open the door, again, silent. As I open the door, I'm presented with my granddad sitting in his man chair. Right? Now, I've adopted the man chair in my later years as well. I understand the importance of a man chair. Mm-hmm. A man chair is vital to every man. Yes. It's his place to rest, it's his place to think, it's his place to chill, right? So I can, as I open the door, I see my granddad in his man chair. Yeah, it's okay. Because you're not looking at anything else, just your granddad. Yeah, I just instantly notice my granddad in his man chair, and he's like this. Right? Yeah. Eyes closed, and he's away with the fairies. Okay. Now, what I also see... What I also see is Guys, my. I know this story and I'm <laughs> what I also see 
is my nan on her <sighs> on her knees on a cushion <laughs> giving my granddad what I would imagine was his yearly present. Right? Yearly present. Now my nan is going to town, right? She's doing the double elbow twister. <laughs> I can see both. Uh, I can, this is what I can see from behind. <laughs> that is what I can see from behind. Right? Oh, no. So I'm, I'm like a deer in headlights. I'm shocked. I'm like, oh, I've walked into my nan giving my granddad a blowjob. Yes. That's, that's exactly the situation I'm now in. And my granddad, for whatever reason, I'm just silent. I'm just like, I've opened the door and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm going to need oh, therapy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need therapy. <laughs> And then he kind of comes to, so to speak. <laughs> That's poor choice of words. <laughs> he kind of looks he comes up. Around. He looks up. I don't know whether, you know, sixth sense, he noticed I was there or whatnot. And he makes eye contact with me. My nan doesn't know I'm there behind her, right? I'm about, you know, 20 feet away or whatever. Big living room. And she's still, she's still doing her thing. She's still going to town, right? And he looks at me. He looks me dead in the eyes. I do it here. He looks at me. He comes across. And then, and then closes his eyes and resumes the position. <laughs> he looked at his watch and mimes five more minutes and then goes wow. <laughs> straight back to his head position. It's like, wow. I don't get this often. I'm going to finish this off. Right? <laughs> yeah, son, get out. <laughs> so I'm mortified, right? So I clo- slowly close Did the door. Did he really need five minutes though? I don't know. <laughs> he, didn't come, he didn't come back into the office for about 10, 15 minutes. So wow. maybe it took a bit longer. But uh, so I go back into the office and I'm fucking head in my hand. There's no mobile phones at this. No mobile phones when I'm this young. So, so. you couldn't have filmed it. No. <laughs> Imagine the TikTok. Nan, you would have been famous, mate. <laughs> so. It's really like that woman in Liverpool in the streets. <laughs> And my nan's got more class than that. Absolutely. She was on a lovely pillow and everything. I bet you had doilies on her and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, story's not over, right? You're probably thinking, Dan, this can't get any worse. Yeah, well, it does. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, in the, I'm in the office and I'm just you know, trying to tap really loud, trying to make sure I don't hear any of this, yeah. any of the grunts and the groans. I know how he feels. <laughs> <laughs> you heard me and Sam the other day, didn't you? Oh, <laughs> I need therapy. That was the worst thing I've ever heard. The last life. long job. It wasn't long. <laughs> It felt like about 10 years. I had to go downstairs after the way. Someone went down. So we, uh, so I'm in, the, I'm in the study, I'm doing my thing. Anyway, my granddad comes back 10, 15 minutes later and he goes, sorry about that, chap. These things happen. And I'm like, oh, all right, thanks. And he sits down and we can start going through the virus and stuff. And I, I turn to him and I go, Anna Kornikova? Again? <laughs> and he goes, he goes, you know what it's like, son. And I was I'm like, okay, how many more pats on the shoulder am I going to well, get? Yeah, but like, at least it wasn't your nan patting you on No, that. true. Do you know well, what I mean? We, just, we know what she's just been well, doing. Well, hold that thought. <sighs> so a few moments later, my nan realises that I'm here. She could obviously hear my granddad talking. She wanders in with the tray, a couple of Diet Cokes, a couple of sandwiches. As nans do. She puts the tray down and goes, hello, darling, and then kisses me on the cheek. Now, my nan will always kiss me on the cheek, and she's got quite a dry complexion to her. It's not a salivary one. But this particular day, it was a wet smooch. It was a wet smooch. There was plenty of saliva on her lips. It was a wet smooch. And I looked at my granddad, and he goes, don't say a word. (laughs) Don't say a word. So that day, ladies and gentlemen, I witnessed my nan giving my granddad all six. My granddad asking me for five more minutes so he could finish coming. And the porn on my granddad's computer. And then my nan kissing me with her cummy lips on my cheek. Five years of therapy that one took. (laughs) And that's my my favourite story of all time. My nan claims that that's not true and it never happened. My mum doesn't like me to talk about it, but... He's doing it anyway. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm telling you, why is what happened. <laughs> oh, Dan, I it's my don't. Favorite story. I, can I just say one thing, right? Out Into of, the fucking microphone, you can. Out of all of your stories, one that is the best one. Thank you. But fucking hell, how are you? How how are you not in therapy oh, like every day of the week? I, I literally, well, I am. <laughs> God, bring what you got. We're going all the way to the top. We will hear. 
when we're backstage, we're playing 